him over the past, well, I know of at least past six, eight months, been using him in a mighty way, but longer than that. But really, in the past six or eight months, he's just stepped up to be a leader amongst our youth, and God has just really been using him. He's, he started a prayer meeting every Thursday night here at the church. He took that upon himself. And, and, man, I'm telling you, God is just really working through him. I, I love him like a son. And so I want to welcome Mr. Darian Coleman. Y'all give him a hand. Before I get started, I want to say thank you to Pastor Doug and Pastor Nathan for giving me the chance to this. And thank you to all the ones who stuck around when my head was hard and wasn't. <laughs> doing the right thing. <laughs> Still needing whooping. <laughs> uh, I'll be reading out of 1 Samuel 17 tonight, if you want to go ahead and turn there with me. I'm just going to skip around it a little bit, so you have to bear with me a little bit. Um. Most of y'all know who Goliath was. He was a Philistine who ruled over Israel and made them run and flee every time he stepped on the battleground. Every time he stepped out, the Israelites would run. The people of God would run and flee from him. And in 17, 26, and 27, And David spoke to the men who stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the men who kills the Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered at him after this man, saying, So shall it be done to this man who kills him? You know, when I was praying to God about a message to preach, and, uh, you know, when Nathan asked me, I was like, yeah, No, I'm not ready for this, you know. And I was just like, I, I'll do it next time or the time after that. But, you know, I, I was like, Well, let me pray about it first, and I'll see what this takes me. And I was praying to God, and he was like, well, you asked to be a man. Here you go, you know. <laughs> and so when I was praying about this message, it was a message that, you know, it sticks out to everybody no matter who you are. Cause, and the message is titled Uncomfortable because so many times we get comfortable for what we're doing and where God has put us that we forget where he wants to put us. And we get so comfortable for God, just like these Israelites who were comfortable every time David st Goliath stepped on the battlefield, that they'd run and flee because they didn't want to fight him, because they didn't want to face the people who were trying to put them down with God. I mean, who can stand against us if God is for us? And, you know, in this, what I love about this is when David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine to stand against my living God? Who is this world to stand against our living God? Brother Doug said a couple of weeks ago in his message, 2% uh, of America is homosexuals. That's the only 2%. And they got Congress changing laws for them left to right. What if 2% of Christians stood up and started speaking out? What would God do with us? What if 2% of Christians stood up, rose their voice, and said, no, this is not what my God wants? Where would we be at? And as I was reading this, you know, David... David reminded me when I thought about it of Isaac because Isaac's not very big and he can't really hurt anybody. <laughs> Sorry, Isaac. But, you know, that's kind of like Isaac and Caleb fighting. You, you see the outcome of it before it ever happened. But, you know, after everybody else was just comfortable with where they were and comfortable with what was happening around them, David was not comfortable. God was laying on his heart. David said, this is not of my people. The people, chosen people of God, the Israelites, and they're comfortable with letting someone who's not even a man of God stand up and try to tell them what to do. And so many Christians today have gotten comfortable with the things happening around us that we forget what God wants to do with us. You know, we get into this world and we forget what he's wanting or, you know, the preaching's good and everything's good and your life's going good, so we forget what our mission really is. We just get comfortable with where he's put us, and we don't want to stick our nose in anything else to change. And so, uh, 
when we stand up and have the courage, when Christians stand up and have the courage, I honestly see America turning around for the better because right now America is not looking pretty good. I mean, we're letting everybody else make our decisions for us and we're letting people get in our office who don't even know what they're doing because they ain't got God on their side. And, you know, when I think about it, it all starts with the men. It all starts with the men in here. You know, I hear men say all the time, I want a house of God. I want my house to be of God. Well, when are you going to stand up and be a man of God? You know, it all starts with the dad because growing up, you always watch the man. What daddy does, son does. And what daddy does, the wife agrees with because that's just how it is. And so... (laughs) But when you look at this, David was the shepherd's boy. David was the youngest son. David was the little one. Nobody expected David to do anything. But David was not okay with what was happening around him. David was not okay with someone telling him that he can't pray in school. David was not okay with someone telling him that he can't worship his Lord wherever he's at and whatever he's doing. David was not okay with someone coming in his country and telling him what he's going to do. David was different. Like many of us in here, we're different. You know, people don't like different. Because when you're different, you're doing something that they don't agree with or something that they just don't want to deal with. So when David stood up, you know, he went to the battlefield. His own brothers were putting him down. You know, they was like, what are you doing out here? What are you doing? They did, they, won't, they didn't want him out there. They felt like he was trying to take glory because of what was already spoken over him of being king of Israel next. And so David was wanting to get out of a comfort zone. And the only way he seen it was to take the biggest one out that was putting his country in a comfort zone. So when you think about it, I mean, that's, that's a pretty big boy that David stepped out there and tried to fight. I mean, me, honestly, I probably wouldn't have done it. I would have sat back and watched Isaac do it. Or <laughs> but when you think about it, I mean, Goliath, his armor itself weighed 125 pounds, and that was just his breastplate. So that's, that's big. That, that's huge. And I'm going to read out of 1 Samuel 45 and 47. And David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to you with the, with the name of the Lord of hosts and the God of armies of Israel whom you have defied. And this day the Lord will deliver you into my hands and I will smite you and take your, heart, your head from you. I will give you the cases of the host of the Philistines this day into the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God of Israel. And all the assemblies shall know that the Lord saves not with the sword and spear from the battlefield. He will give you unto you into our hands. Most time when you go on the battlefield, you see someone with a sword or a spear, or in today's time, a gun. So when David stepped out there onto the battlefield down in the valley with Goliath, you know, Goliath was, he was just throwing that off like, I'm just, I'm, I'm going to eat this one. There's no doubt to it. You know, this is nothing to me. And David is like, whoa, 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 you're sitting here putting me down. I'm about to show you what my God's really made of. Yeah. You know, David was going to stand up and be a man of God that everybody else in Israel could not be at this time. And when you think about it, when he was getting ready after Saul done told him that he was able to go out and fight because he couldn't find nobody else, Saul tried to put all of this armor on him, and David couldn't even walk around it. We're like that today. We're trying to get all of this stuff around us and still have God, and it doesn't work. If you try to put on the world stuff, you're doing nothing with God's stuff. And so, like, you know, David steps out there, and Goliath tells him that he's going to throw his flesh into the air and feed it to the beast of the land. And, you know, David's just like, no, I'm going to show you what a real God does. You know, this is after Goliath has done mock Jesus and God and everything else and has put everybody down around him. 
And David stands up and is like, no, I'm going to be uncomfortable today. And <clears throat> America has a generation that's been awakened by y'all in general as the elders to be uncomfortable. Because if you haven't noticed, our generation can't sit still for nothing. Yeah. When there's something we don't like, we can't shut our mouth. We talk about it, even if it gets us in trouble, we're still going to talk about it. And so many people have gotten comfortable that they forget what we're really here for, that God put us here for a mission, and our mission is to bring as many souls to Christ as we can. And what if today a million Christians stood up and decided that they wanted some laws changed? Congress is going to change some laws to keep them happy because they don't want to deal with them. Because when you think about it, people say that there's not a real God until they got a real problem. And then they pray to a real God. And <clears throat> just like David did, you know, he stood up and he stepped out on the battlefield when nobody else believed in him. When we stand up and step out on the battlefield when nobody else believes in him, something big is going to happen that nobody else thought could happen. And David was just... He, he was not happy with what was happening around him. And, you know, today Christians are not happy with what's around them, but they're not going to speak of it because they don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. And, you know, everyone talks about Jesus being nice and happy, but they don't talk about the Jesus that happens when you don't have him. When you don't have Jesus and then you get up there and you're getting judged by God and he throws you in hell and you don't understand why. And that's because you don't have Jesus. And the Israelites, I see them as America today because we run from everything that's around us. We run when times get hard, we run, and we don't look back. But David was not going to run. After he's done, took a bear by the beard and pulled a lamb out of his mouth. That's, that's something. I mean, walk up to a beard at, bear after you done got the lamb, and then you go back to him and kill him. I mean... The beard is pretty lenient with you, with him taking the lamb from you. He was pretty happy, and especially just one lamb out of 600. That's, that's nothing serious to some of us in here, but that was something serious to him because he was trusted with that lamb. And God has trusted us with so many stuff, and we're taking it for granted. You know, we take what he gives us for granted, and sometimes we don't even realize the blessings he's given us because we want more blessings that we want instead of what he wants. And so, <clears throat> like the... Sign outside says there's a stone for every Goliath. There's a stone for everything that steps in front of you. That sign goes with this message well. Because who's to define our living God? I mean, the God who created us all, the God who makes us breathe every day, the God when times get hard, he sticks his hand down in there and he takes care of it. Who, who's to define him? You know, so many people today only pray to him when they got a problem. They don't pray to him on a daily basis to thank him for what he's really doing every day. And, <clears throat> you know, as I look back at where our youth was, it'll be three years ago, two years ago, I mean, I'm honestly proud to say that y'all have risen a bunch of men and women of God to stand up and do right. Because our time's coming when people from my generation are going to be president and in Congress and senators and gov governors and stuff like that. And what's going to happen when you get a president of the United States who prays every morning before he does anything, before he passes a vote, he prays to God to see what he wants. <clears throat> America's going to change for the better. And, you know, even when no one's believing in you and no one's watching and no one believes that you can even do anything, there's still a chance that you can do it because just like David, everybody put him down. The king forgot who he was and he even prayed an anointing and a blessing over him that he was going to be the next king. He forgot who he was. And so when you think about it, all of us have giants in here today and all of us face things that we don't necessarily want to speak of because we're okay with it as long as it doesn't be shown or as long as it doesn't show up every time we open our eyes. And 
this message was not going to be very long, but um, there are some people in here that might have giants that they're facing and they don't realize how to defeat it. There might be people in here that have giants and they don't realize what to do because they haven't prayed to God in a while or because they're comfortable where they are and so they don't want to awaken a giant to slay the giant. And Dennis, if you'd come. Uh, if that is you in here today, I mean, these altars are open and I just, if you got something that is a giant to you that might not even be big to some people in here, but it's big to you, or if you got something that you need help praying with, or if you're just comfortable where you are and you want to get uncomfortable for Jesus again, come to these altars and allow people to help you. I mean, just like David, when nobody believed in him, he come and he prayed to God and he did what God wanted and he got an answer from God. And so, if you'd stand with me.